Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing it is to be here with you all today as we grab hold to a forgiving God. What a wonderful thing that we have a God that will come and has made a way for you and I to be reconciled unto him. What a forgiving God we have. What a God would, would love so deep for his people. Good googly goop. What a wonderful thing. Well, we want to welcome you all here today at the Ark of the Covenant Ministry Sunday morning worship. And we are just having an ecstatic time today with our worship, with our getting prepared to come before God's people. Oh, we just been rejoicing in it all. What a powerful thing that we receive when we have the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. What a powerful, powerful thing. And we want to welcome you all here with us today. We want to welcome all of our covenant keepers, all of our covenant seekers, those that are seeking the man Christ Jesus, the body of Christ, the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number two family. We want to welcome you all here and we want you to know that we are grateful and thankful for you all to be here with us today. Now we continuing in our series that we've been working on entitled You Helped Me. You Helped Me Part 2, You Helped Me Part 3, You Helped Me Part 4, You Helped Me Part 5, 6, 7 is already on our YouTube channel. And you can find them at the ARK, A-R-K, of O-F, the T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, the number two, and you will see our symbol right here, which says, being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach us. And you can go there, you'll find our series there, all of those that have been previously done, all type of videos and everything. We just ask that you share them with your family, friends, and loved ones. Listen, so Subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is uploaded. Leave us a comment. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. They all there for you. Our series is based on the life of Joseph. As we go through the life of Joseph. And our baseline scripture is Genesis chapter 50 verse number 20. Where the word of God says you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're going to have a word of prayer. And then we're going to continue on with what God has for us. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we're so grateful, Lord, and we're so thankful for your word, Lord. We're thankful for your presence, Lord. we thankful for your glory, Lord, your victory, your overcoming, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you for your precious, precious gift of salvation, Lord. And, Father God, we ask in that right now, Lord, you decrease me and increase you, Lord, that you release unto your people what thus says the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so get your Bibles, and we're going to go to Genesis chapter 47, chapter 48, I mean, I'm sorry. And let's begin at verse number one as we listen to the reading. Chapter 48. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me, and said unto me, 
Behold, I will make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy issue, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephrath, and I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, the same is Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons, and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for Abe, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath shewed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand, toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph, and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die. But God shall be with you, and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful, wonderful thing there. Now let us go through this here. As we do a quick recap on uh, chapter 47, uh, we remember that the Joseph's family had come in to the land of Egypt. He had called for them to come into the land of Egypt. They brought in 70 souls total. They brought 70 people along with them from the land of Canaan. And when Joseph met his father, it was all embraced and hugging and everything was as it was supposed to be. Because we know that Joseph's name meant the savior of the world. And we know that his father, Jacob, was a trickster, a deceiver, but he came in as Israel, the prince. He came in as what God has set before him. He brought his 70 people with him, and then they go before Pharaoh, the one that's divine righteousness, what his name means. They go before him, and Joseph tell him, let them know what you are. Let them know who you are, and let let it be known that you are shepherds. And we know that being a shepherd in Egypt was an abomination. But they come before. Joseph bring five of them. He brought five, which meaning grace. You see, because now all 12 brothers are together, which means authority. And we all have that same authority that's given unto us. Because the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, that 
that God has given his authority to the church. He has given his authority to the people of God for the body of Christ. That everything is underneath Jesus Christ's feet. And this authority is given unto the church. And we also know that as he saw the five, he asked them, Pharaoh, what they were. They told him that they were shepherds, and he he opened up the door for them to be blessed in the land of Egypt. As they go to Goshen, as they were brought into a land of abundance, and when he looked at his father, he brought his father unto Pharaoh, and Pharaoh asked him, how old are thee? And his father told him, he said, I'm 130 years of journey. In other words, he was telling Pharaoh, listen, by abundance, divine abundance, that he was drawn near unto God for a divine vision. In other words, 130 is broken down into three sections. And in those three sections, it gives us an understanding that he got divine abundance because he drew. The number 20 means he drew near to God and 10 means the divine vision. In other words, a lot of us get caught up with what people say about us or what people speak over us or what they say we gonna have have or what they say we not going to have. They look at our skin color. They look at where we come from. They look at what we have in our pockets. They look at the way we walk or the way we talk or they look at the way we look. But the Bible is telling us right here that our ab divine abundance is when we draw to Jesus Christ. And he has a divine vision for our life. In other words, God is the overseer of your destiny. Not man, not the government, not your brother, not your sister, not your mother or your father. That God is the over the divine vision for your life when you draw near unto him. And he told Pharaoh that he has been not as as his forefathers was before them because his forefathers passed it down to him. You see, we got to have the time to pass it down. The Bible tells us, bring up a child in the way it should go, and when they get old, it shall not depart. In other words, show the child the walk of Jesus Christ. Let the child hear you speak the word of Jesus Christ. Let the child feel Jesus Christ. And when it get old, that still will be in them. And that's a powerful revelation because he said he learned this from his forefathers. And then he kept on going to the simple fact that he blessed Pharaoh. And then he went on about to his way. And Joseph went back to his job. Now his job was being simple. He was the governor of the land. He was in charge of the land. And he was in charge during a famine time. Now listen, they done run out of all they have gotten from Joseph. They done spent all the money that they had in Egypt. And they don't know what to do next. And when they come to Joseph, they come to him and say, all of our money is gone. Joseph said, well, listen, bring me all of your flocks, all of your, all of your herds. Bring them unto me, and I'm going to give you the seed and the feed that you need. He said, I'm going to give you everything that you need, but bring me all of your flocks and stuff. They brought all the flocks to Joseph. And then after the next year, the second year, they learning now. They, they in a learning process because we know too many learning. Now, Joseph, they come back to Joseph. They said, we done gave up everything, all of our money, all of our flocks. He, they said, well, all we got is ourselves and the land. And Joseph did a unique thing. Joseph said, well, listen, I'm going to buy all of your lands. He bought all of the lands and he moved them off of the lands and put them in the far most parts of Egypt everywhere. But he bought all the land for Pharaoh. He brought it all into Pharaoh. And then when they got to that point, they didn't have nothing else. They said, well, listen, 
What else can we do? He, Joseph was ready for him. Joseph sit and told him, the savior of the world, he told them, he said, listen, I'm going to give you seed and stuff for the land. He said, you're going to work that land and you're going to give a fifth part unto Pharaoh and you're going to keep the rest. But a fifth part is coming to Pharaoh. And he said, I'll make this a law and it's a law to this day in the land of Egypt that the fifth part comes to Pharaoh. Now understand if we look at this in the spiritual realm and a lot of people don't get a chance to see this but when you look at it from a spiritual point of view understand that Israel was under the law. Now he bringing them, they learning they had all 12 brothers there, but 11 of them is underneath Joseph. So 11 means sovereign teaching. Now, he was teaching them about grace. When they brought five people in front of Pharaoh, that five mean grace. So now... He's going to teach them, God is going to teach them about grace. He told them, bring me a fifth part. That's grace. He said, everything you get, you bring a fifth here. That's grace. What he's teaching them now is now you you no longer under the law, you under grace. And in that grace, there's grace giving. And a lot of people don't see about grace giving. You see, they want to say, well, I gave this much to the church, but the neighbor next door that's hungry, they don't want to help them. They said, I've done this for the church, but that neighbor that's right across the street from mm -hmm. them that's, that's hungry, they don't want to help them. Or the one that need a ride to work, they don't want to do that. Or the one that's in trouble that they can help, they don't want to help them. They all see the one that we step over that's laying in the street. We don't want no parts of them. We don't want for those that ain't got to be a part of our circle that's got. But the Bible's teaching a grace giver. Now, you want to say, well, where is that at in the Bible? I can show it to you. In 1 Kings chapter 5 and chapter 6 and chapter 7 speaks about Solomon building the temple. Now, when Solomon built the temple, the people came and they gave all, they gave so much that Solomon had to tell them to stop giving. They didn't give just a tenth. They gave all that they could. They gave it from the abundance of their heart. They gave it because this is what they felt God was telling them to do. They gave all of their gold. They gave all of their silver. They gave all of their purple linens and all of the woodwork, all of it, and they gave their time, their talents, they gave their skills unto the building of the temple. Listen, you said, well, that's the Old Testament. I, where is that at in the New that's Testament? Right. He right. said, and it, I'm going to take you to a grace chapter again. It says in Acts chapter 5 that Ananias and and his wife, they was a part of the giving to the church. It had got so good giving to the church, people was giving their houses. People was selling their flocks and giving it to the church. Laying it before the disciples' feet. Oh, Ananias went and said he was going to give his portion of the house that he's going to sell. He went and sold the house, but then going to renege and keep back from the Lord. He had made a covenant with God, but then he's going to break the covenant. Mm -hmm. And when he did, God killed him. He killed him mm -hmm. and he killed his wife. Sure. Right then and there they dropped dead. In other words, when you is involved in this grace giving, you are not worrying about what others say. You are involved with a covenant between you and God. In other words, what did Jesus say about it? Jesus said, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was in jail, did you come and see me? When I was thirsty, did you give me a drink? The disciples asked him, when would you, was you hungry, Lord? When was you thirsty? When were you in jail? He said, when you do it to the least of these. And 
you doing it unto me when you give it in my name. In other words, there's a grace giving. And you give. And you give to not only to the church, but you give to those that's around you. You give to those that's in need. You give to those that's in different difficulties and situations. Not only do you give your money, because they gave their time. They gave their talent. They gave the knowledge that God has put into them. They gave their wisdom. And it was a powerful thing when Joseph done this because now even today they still practicing grace giving. And as we continue to go on, they began to see how the life had been changed, that they all their needs were being met. Everything was being done that they needed to be done. And as the drought go on, they didn't worry about anything. Why? Because now they leaning on the Savior of the world. In other words, God want us to lean on him. Regardless of the situation and circumstances, they has found peace in the midst of the drought. Because now they leaning on Joseph has to supply all of their needs. And in that, it teaches us that if we lean on the Lord, he shall supply our needs. We ain't got to fight and fuss about it. We ain't got to worry about it and be up sleepless nights. We ain't got to go around and do this and do that. We can lean on the Lord and do our part and watch God do his part. And as it continues, we see that now we get to chapter 48, and now there is... A, a unique changing in the thing because now old Israel is now at, at coming toward his end. He's now coming to his end of his trials and tribulations. And when this is done, Joseph has been informed that his father is sick. Joseph gets up, takes his boys, and he goes to visit his father. Now, when he goes to visit his father with his son, his father mustered up all the strength that he could to sit up in the bed so he can receive his son. And when he came in, he brought his children with him. He brought Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh mean that God has made him forget his toils. Ephraim meaning fruitful. He brings them both in. And Israel asked him, well, who are these? And he told them that these are his son that God has given him in this land. And he was so happy because he said that God went above and abundance more than he could possibly imagine because all he ever wanted to do was to see Joseph. But now he even sees Joseph offsprings. And he tells them to bring them to me. Bring them unto me and I... I'm going to bless them. He brings them unto, unto him, and he kisses them both. And he put Manassas on the left side and put on the right side and put Ephraim on the left side. And Israel couldn't hardly see because his vision was dim, but he was led by God. He was led by the Lord. And when he went to bless the children, he crossed his hands. He put his right hand on Ephraim and put his left hand on Manasseh. Now, for some of us, we might not understand what that means. But let me give you a little insight. The right hand is the right hand of power the right hand of plenty, and the right hand of victory. The left hand is a lesser dominant situation. It is the fruitfulness, but not as dominant as the right hand is. So in, in, he, in, in that time, they lean heavily on the blessing of the elders because they knew that their elders was walking with God. Now, let me explain to you how this works so you can get the fullness of it because we done stopped doing it, some of us. But listen, those that's walking with God, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 17, that listen, that God, you would... You haven't seen the things that God can give. You ain't heard the things that could be happening. But most people take that for being in heaven. But God ain't talking about heaven because in verse number 10, he says that the spirit 
can bring it forth unto us. That means he's talking about right here and right now. Not only that, he's told us that who knows God but the Spirit. The Spirit searches the deep things of God, and he will reveal that unto us. In other words, we will understand and hear from God through the Spirit as the Spirit. Holy Spirit teaches us and uh, guide us in what God is saying and what God is doing. And in that, some people might even think that you strange because the Bible says that people won't understand you. Because simply they won't understand you because they don't can't receive what's from the spirit. The Bible says that eat that that the carnal man, the fleshly man, would think that this stuff is crazy. That you are out of your mind. That listen, they don't understand it. They can't receive it. So why are you trying to get man's approval? Why are you trying to? be in, in, in right standing with man. The Bible tells us that we need to get in right standing with God because we got the spirit of God and God is going to lead us. God is going to tell us what to do, how to do, and when to do. When we walk in with God, God is going to open it up for us to understand. And when we grab that, you see, John tells us, the Gospel of John tells us, and John chapter 14, verse 17, that the spirit of truth that's in us, the world cannot receive. The spirit of truth that's in you, the world won't understand it. You say, well, how did that work? The same way he told Israel he was going to make them a peculiar people. You're not going to walk the way the world walks. You're not going to talk the way the world talks. You're not going to look the way the world looks. You're not going to act the way the world acts. If we stay in contact with the spiritual realm, understanding, listening for what God says in all situations and in all circumstances, in every area of our life, we will walk a different path every time. And it's going to be peculiar to those that's around you. It's going to be strange to those that's around you because they looking from the flesh and you working from the spiritual. So don't let them hold to put that on your mind that you got to look like your neighbor, that you got to do like your neighbor do. Do as God tells you to do. And when Israel crossed his hands, he had learned from his own experience in his own life. You see, he had tried to do it on his own, listening to his mama, because his mama had him go in there and trick his father out of the blessing of his brother, out of Esau's blessing from him and he figuring that listen I need to do this because I need to get the blessing that Esau gonna get because Esau was the oldest and he wanted that blessing but his mama had him to go and trick his father his father was blind and couldn't see and he she had him put on some stuff and it put on some goat hair and she fixed the food and brought it on in there to him and Isaac blessed him. He, 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 he blessed him. And when he did, he went on out. And when his brother come and coming for his blessing, he said, I already gave it. And he, he asked his father, do you have anything left for me? Listen, when we trying to do it in our own spirit, we don't know what we doing. We, we can't do it because we don't have the knowledge that God has. When we start doing it in our own spirit, we cut off the communication of God. And we start communicating with ourselves with being influenced by the adversary. See, when we're not listening to God, then we're listening to the adversary. There ain't no three people. That's it's right. just only two. It's either God or the adversary. Right. So if we listening to God, then we're going to follow God. That's right. if we we stop listening to God, we're going to follow the adversary. And that's exactly what he did. But now he has learned. The Bible tells us that two mean learning. This is the second year that they in. They all is in a learning stage. Now Israel done lived additional 17 years. That means that he's now 147 years old. And 
this is a powerful thing because now the, the 17 means a new beginning of a spiritual walk. He has lived a spiritual revelation in his life. So he done crossed his hands because he listening to God to bless the children. Now Joseph didn't like that. Because Joseph wanted the oldest boy to receive the right hand blessing and the younger receive the left hand blessing. But Israel tells him, no, I know what I'm doing right. because he listening to God. Forget the tradition That's that right. you under. That's forget right. that law that you under. Forget all that. This is about grace That's here. Right. And I want to teach you about grace. And he crossed his hands and he blessed them. And now when he blessed them and, and that was then he coming to the end of his fruition. In other words, the Bible says that the 147 itself means that he has a well-deserved change in his life. He got a well-deserved change. And that well-deserved change is when he going to hear those words that Paul recorded. I always wondered what Paul got it from. But now I understand. Paul got it from right here. When he hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because Israel has grown in spirit and grown in his walk that he is directly communicating with God. He was so directly communicated with God that he told his son, now I'm going to die. He knew exactly when the Lord was going to call him home because his mission and his life was through. Paul said, I kept the faith and I ran my course. See, Paul knew it as well when it was his time to go. He, could, he was so communed with God. Now, there was no fear in it, but he told them, he has set it up and told them exactly what to do, that how to do and what to do on, on his time of departure. So let us go on to chapter 49, and let's listen to that. Y'all get your Bibles ready. Get your Bibles ready. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 49. <coughs> and we're going to open it up for me, sir. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 49 where we're going to continue and see what the Lord has for us here as we come into the end of Joseph's walk. As we come into the end of Joseph's transformation here. As, as we learning... Uh oh Genesis chapter 49. As we learn exactly what Joseph going to do in this situation and circumstance. Let's see what the Lord has for us. Chapter 49. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Stoop down. He couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and until him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his pole unto the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. 
Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens, and he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. God, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hind let loose, he giveth goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him, and shot at him, and hated him. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence he is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brother. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel and this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. And he charged them, and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite, for a possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed, and yielded up the ghost, and was gathered unto his people. Amen. That's a powerful, powerful area right there. <coughs> it lets us know that when we <clears throat> are walking with God, when we are with the Lord, when we are communing with God as we filled with his spirit as we are members of the body of Christ men is telling us that listen we have an obligation to look over our family we have an obligation to train up our family we even have an obligation to be that example to our family so when the time comes it is times for blessing over your children. It is time to tell them what God is telling you about your child. It is time for us to be in position where we're supposed to be as priests of our household and recipient of one that allows Christ Jesus to be the head of the household. Then we are to bless our children. Also, he hit on a very important thing for us as we could go through all of the blessings, but we don't have that time. But he hit on a, a unique part that I want to, to talk about. He let us know that we are to provide for the end times. We should be having a way to provide. And God will make a way. I'm so glad he's making a way for me to provide at the end times for my family in all that situation and burden. Because you don't want that burden on your family. You don't want that burden on your wife and your children. You want to be done provided a, a way for this to be taken care of. And he said that the, they had already had bought a cave. His aunt ancestors had bought a cave. See, some of y'all might gonna have to provide for others that in your family that can't provide for themselves. The Bible tells us that we have to provide, and we have to provide for our family. Some of them won't be able to provide for themselves because they're in all type of situations and circumstances. But as your household, as you are the priest of your household, men, we supposed to provide. We supposed to provide that which God has given unto us to our families. And one of the great things is to have that in place at the end time. And that's a powerful thing. We want to continue on. We're going to listen to the 
of chapter 50, and we're going to see what thus says the Lord. Uh -oh. Genesis chapter 50. And we're going to see the closing out here. Chapter 50. And Joseph fell upon his father's face, and wept upon him, and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father, and the physicians embalmed Israel. And forty days were fulfilled for him, for so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him threescore and ten days. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spake unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die. In my grave which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan, there shalt thou bury me. Now therefore let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury thy father, according as he made thee swear. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the house of Joseph, and his brethren, and his father's house. Only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan. There they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation, and he made a mourning for his father seven days. When the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians, wherefore the name of it was called Abel Misraim, which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did unto him according as he commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan, and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with a field for a possession of a burying place of Ephron the Hittite before Mamre. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father, after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren, and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, <coughs> Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye. Praise the Lord. As you can continue to finish reading, just continue to finish. It's at the end right there. But we want to take a look at this, and we want to see how this fits in with us today. Listen, Israel has now passed. He has put his feet up in the bed, and, and the ghost left from upon him. He has passed on. Joseph now goes and prepares to bury his father along with his brothers. He goes to Pharaoh and to ask Pharaoh, can I go bury my father? Because my father has left instructions on what to do, how to do, and where to do. And Pharaoh gives him permission to go. All of the fathers and elders of Israel went. All of the elders of Egypt went. He had a great company that went with him. A whole huge company that went with him. And they went on all the way after they done mourned three score and ten years. Seventy days they done mourned. They done went through the embalming process. The embalming process took them 40 days to 
redo what they had to do with the embalming process, which means quarantine. They had put him away and they did what they was doing away from the people. And the 70 means a new beginning as there was going to be a new beginning for this particular man. See, they didn't understand the Egyptians had a... a, a not a revelation of what was going on. You see, the Bible tells us in Second, First Corinthians chapter two, verses nine through seventeen, that the the carnal man won't be able to grasp what's going on. What won't be able to understand. To him, it is foolishness. The the spiritual things. It is all foolishness. But to the children of God that's got the spirit of the Lord, that's receiving from the Lord, walking with the Lord, under receiving from the Lord, they understood that his new beginning is not with their mummification. His new beginning has started when he ascended on upon high, where he has gone before God Almighty himself. The Bible says is absent with the body is present with the Lord and he has ascended already and they just have a shell there but they prepares it because he didn't want his body to be left in Egypt there was a place that was prepared for him and he wanted to go where that place was prepared where Abraham and Sarah was buried where Isaac and Rebecca was buried now watch this Leah was buried there you see Rachel was the woman that he wanted, but Leah was the woman that God gave him. Leah was that woman that bore six sons and bore one daughter. Leah was the one that bore Judah, that out of Judah came Christ Jesus. And we're going to continue to hold on to that. We're going to continue to understand that a lot of times we will do things out of our own want. But God is going to work that thing out of what we need. You see, we got a want, but God got a need. And I don't know about you, I'd rather fulfill God's need than get my want. And as he went on uh, and, and did this burial, all the people around them that saw it saw that it was a great morning. They, they, they went there and they had a seven-day period that they just wailed and mourned for their father. And after the seventh day was completed, they come on back. While they come on back to Egypt and they get in their rightful positions, now the 11 brothers are fearful. Now the 11 brothers are nervous because they know that Israel is gone. And they figure it was Israel that was holding the wrath back from Joseph because they know what they had done to Joseph. They know what how they had treated Joseph. They know what they had sent Joseph to. They know what they had how they turned their back on Joseph and didn't didn't listen to him when he was crying out from the pit. How they pulled him out from the pit and sold him to his family. As his family took him on away, they didn't know what happened to him. They didn't know that Joseph ended up in Potiphar's house. And Potiphar being means that he worshiping the cow. In other words, Potiphar was self-absorbing of the things that he had hard work done. He done all what he had. He done all this. And he didn't have a God of our understanding. He had an idol that he was worshiping. He didn't have a Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his life. What he had was a bunch of pride going on in his life. But Joseph still was blessed and was still moved on. See, Potiphar helped Joseph. And when Potiphar helped Joseph, Joseph continued to go on, even though the enemy tried to destroy him, even though the enemy tried to set up a stage and area for him so he can be thrown off of the divine path that he was on. But Joseph did what we should have done. We should run when trouble comes that way. We should run when we have a 
all kind of sexual immorality. Run and go the other direction. Run and go back toward Christ Jesus. Don't let the enemy pull you off your divine path with lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Run to God. Run on to God. Joseph ended up going and putting it in jail. Potiphar thought he was doing something destructive, but Potiphar don't know that he was helping Joseph. See, Potiphar don't know that he put Joseph in a place where he learned how to do certain things, where he learned about his dreams, and he learned about visions, and he learned how to take care of a group of people with a little stuff. He learned how to gather mm -hmm. them all together. You see, Joseph learned. See, jo Potiphar didn't know that he was helping Joseph. See, and when he was in there, and he he helped the baker and the butcher. The, they didn't know that they were helping him when he ended up getting released and he didn't tell the Pharaoh in time. He waited two years before he told Pharaoh about Joseph. But he didn't know he was helping Joseph. He didn't know that when he come up there before Pharaoh that the dream that Pharaoh was given, he didn't, Pharaoh didn't know that the dream wasn't for him. He didn't know that the dream was just given unto him, but it was for Joseph, so Joseph can do what he has to do. See, Pharaoh didn't know he was helping Joseph, and they brothers didn't know that they helped him when they put him in a pit and isolated him, where he can understand that now he has to depend on the Lord. The brothers didn't know what the brothers knew, that Israel is dead, and now Joseph is going to retaliate. So they sent the messenger to Joseph. To tell Joseph that your father said, and that's not nowhere recorded in the Bible that Israel told them that. That sent that to Joseph. But they set it up because they are fearful. Then they come and bow down. All 11 of them bow down. And, and here's the thing. Only 10 of them. <laughs> knew anything about it because Benjamin was too young at the time. Benjamin was still a little toddler. He wasn't out there when they was tending to the sheep, tending to the cattle and all that. When Joseph showed up, it was 10 of them standing there. And that word 10 simply means a vision, a divine vision. They didn't know that it was part of that vision that was on Joseph's life. Because the Bible says when they came and bowed down, all 11 of them, they, which 11 means sovereignty teachers. In other words, God was going to teach them something right here and right now that they needed to get a grasp to because of grace. Joseph looked at him and tears fell into his eyes. He said, am I in the place of God? He kissed his brothers. He had forgiven his brothers. See, Joseph knew about forgiveness uh, way back up the road. Because when Joseph became second in command, I don't know about you, but I can tell you about me. Potiphar would have been on my mind. Because Potiphar is the one that put me in prison. Out of all that blessing I did at Potiphar's house. Out of all that work I did at Potiphar's house. Out of all that stuff I walked in the ways of God in his house. He going to take his wife word against me. And put me in the prison for no such reason at all. For which he, he did never mention Potiphar's name anymore. He had forgiven Potiphar as well as he had forgiven his brothers. He told his brothers, listen, what you meant for evil, you didn't know that it was a divine vision that was already set up. You didn't understand that God meant this for good. He said the reason that he meant it for good, the Savior of the world meant it for good, the reason why Jesus Christ went to the cross, the reason why he came and left his abode in heaven and was born of a virgin, walked on this earth, the reason that he got beaten with the cat of nine tails, the reason that he got crowned with thorns, the reason that he got nailed to the cross, the reason that he got raised and hung up upon a tree, the reason that he became a curse unto God himself. The reason that he took on all of our sins, the reason that he did this because he was savior of the world to save many. And that's what Joseph told them. He said, I was put here to save many. You see, he was resembling 
the actions of Christ. He was put in that position to save many. You see, whereby one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And when one man gave life unto many. You see, we got to understand that Joseph was resembling Christ Jesus. In other words, God wants us to resemble Christ Jesus. God wants to see Christ Jesus in our walk. God wants to see Christ Jesus in our talk. God want to see Christ Jesus in our actions. God want to see Christ Jesus in our homes. God want to see Christ Jesus on our job. God want to see Christ Jesus at the doctor's office. God want to see Christ Jesus at the grocery store. God want to see Christ Jesus in your car when somebody cuts you off. God want to see Christ Jesus when they backbiting, backstabbing, and lying on you. Because listen, it's not about them. It's about the divine vision that is before you. Look, Joseph lived until he was 110 years old. Which simply means divine abundance for that divine vision. God is going to make a way for the vision that he has for your life. What a powerful, powerful thing. What a revelation. And we're so grateful that we understand that in that, Joseph had to learn to forgive. Because if you can't forgive, then God can't forgive you. That's right. You have to forgive. You have to let it go and let God. You have to let it go because it's not for you. It's for God. It's not for that person. It's for you and God. See, it's not for that person to have authority over you. It's for the Spirit of the Lord to have that authority in you. It's for you to be able to turn and say, listen, I'm sorry. I let it go. God forgive you. And go to praying for that person. Go to heaping love upon that person. Let your walk be your example. Let your walk be your talk. Let your walk in Christ Jesus be the overcoming victory measure of everything that we do. And in that, we will see we would have divine abundance. For the divine vision that God has for our life. You see, 100 means divine abundance. 10 means divine vision. And in that, we shall be, be the sons of God. Well, we so grateful. We so thankful today. And maybe there's someone here uh, that's listening to the sound of my voice that don't... Uh, having not grasped hold to that divine abundance or that divine vision that God has for their life because they're not turned toward God. They haven't turned toward the man Christ Jesus. they caught up in all kind of confusion, all kind of misunderstanding. they caught up in all kind of destructive ways. They turned away from God. Listen, we can take care of that right now. We can grab hold to the man Christ Jesus right now. The Bible says all we have to do is believe. The Bible said if we believe in the virgin birth, that, he, that Jesus Christ lived on this earth, that Jesus Christ went to the cross for your sins and my sins. He went there because we all are like sheep that done went astray, that we all have come short of the glory of God, that we all have sinned against God Almighty himself. And if we understand that Christ was the man of intervention. The Bible says there's no other name given unto man whereby they can be saved. And that's the man Christ Jesus. Listen, God highly exhorted him and lifted him up. And when he lifted him up, he became sin for you and I. He paid our punishment. He... <clears throat> reconciled us. He redeemed us. And the Bible says that he died upon that cross. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Now if you can believe that he rose on the third day and that he ascended into heaven sitting on the right hand of the Father and waiting for his triumphant return to gather his church. Listen, if you can turn from your ways and turn toward the ways of Jesus Christ and just believe 
believe. The Bible tells us that we confess it with our mouths. In other words, if we can just say it out of our mouth, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. I believe that you are the Savior. Lord, <clears throat> I am a sinner. Lord, and I'm turning from my ways, turning toward you. Lord Jesus Christ, save my soul. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Find you a Bible. Get you a Bible. And when you get that Bible, start studying the Bible, reading the Bible. Find you a sin-hating Bible-preaching church and make a public confession with your baptism and begin to walk in the ways of Jesus. Christ and watch God give you divine abundance watch he give you divine peace watch he give you divine wisdom watch he give you divine strength when you don't feel like you can make it watch him give you divine understanding watch he give you divine power watch he give you divine growth watch he give you divine favor upon you and watch you as you go for, toward the divine vision that God has for you. When he has set your destiny in his hands, not in man's. What a powerful thing. Well, we're so grateful that all of you all were here. We're thankful for you being here with us. Remember that we're going to be starting next Sunday on something new and we're so grateful that we had this time in Joseph. We want to thank my wife for this time because she the one led me to, to, to Joseph and said, listen, I want to hear about Joseph. So I, I followed what she was telling me and the Lord has spoke to me about it. So I had a good time in Joseph. I hope you all did too. And remember all the parts of this series is, is on our YouTube channel. In other words, you can find all eight parts on our YouTube channel at the ARK, A-R-K, of, O-F, the, T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, the number two, and you'll see our symbol right here that says, being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. We got a lot of videos there. We got the You Help Me series there. It's other series there, other Bible studies, all kind of stuff. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let it, leave us a comment on what you think about it or what you might want us to even teach on. Listen, hit the subscribe, subscribe, subscribe button. Also, share the videos with your family, your loved ones, your friends, all your acquaintances. Or even share them with the unsaved that you witness them to. And we'd be so grateful as you hit that notification button to know when the next video is uploaded. Well, we're going to say a word of prayer and we're going to get out as we're praying for uh, Trail and his... Um, the newborn and, and they family, and we're praying for Brother Cliff. We're praying for uh, Nakia. We're praying for my wife. We're praying for Zachariah and Carrington. We're praying for Bob and Gloria. We're praying for Pammy and Steve. We're praying for uh, Tom Sr. and Tom Jr., Captain Jim, Charlie, Amy. We're praying for Miss Ruth. We're praying for David. We're praying for... Um, Virginia. Virginia Gentry, we're praying for Deborah, we're praying for Courtney Brown and his family, we're praying for Cherie, D Dana, Sharia, we're praying for um, Tori, we're praying for all of my wife's family as we pray for Deborah, we're praying for Buki and Shay, we're praying for Mabel and her family, Mabel and her family. we're praying for um, Lisa, we're praying for Diane, we're praying for Tyshell, Michelle, Tawana, we're praying for Keith and Kevin Marcus. and Daniel, we're praying for Marcus Moss, Bridget Moss, we're praying for his sister Gigi, we're praying for Brother Ronnie, we're praying for all those that's in nursing homes and 
and residential care facilities and independent living facility, those that's in hospitals, those that's on the bed of affliction, those that's going through trials and tribulations and testing. We're praying for Israel and we're praying for all those that's in war-torn areas, all those that's in disastrous situations, as we're praying for the homeless and those that's in missions and shelters all over the world, as we continue to pray for all those that's in war right now now, as we pray for the armed forces, our first responders, as we pray for all of you and your situations and circumstances, as we pray for all of my family, Auntie Peachy, uh, Carol Jean, Robin, uh, Robin, and Auntie Carolyn, as we pray for Bunteen and Phyllis, as we continue to pray for Charles and Chester and Dwayne, we pray for all of you all right now. We can't mention everybody. We're just going to mention a few. We got a long prayer list, but we want to pray for all of you all right now as well. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for being such a good and gracious God. Lord, we thank you for being God Almighty all by yourself, Lord, as you have set the divine direction for us, as you have set the divine di vision for us, Lord, as you has wrote it down when we would barely we, we wouldn't even form. You have written down what we were going to do. And Lord, we come and pray that we come in the fullness of the book, Lord. We pray that when the books are open, Lord, it said to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. Lord, we're praying for the unsaved, Father God. We're asking right now that they that their salvation come. As we're praying for the backslider, that he turns and come back unto you, Lord. And Father God, we're praying for your church, Lord, as your church continue to edify Jesus Christ, as they continue to edify the body of Christ, magnify Jesus Christ, Lord, bring multiplying to the kingdom of God, Lord, and glorifying God the Father in his plan. And Lord, we thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, glory, and we thank you, and as we always say, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.